welcome to this week's Gary Dunn Show. I'm Gary Smith, and on today's show, we are going to talk about this past weekend's uh, PSAC West Road victory at Edinburgh, and then we're going to break down the, everything going on in the PSAC, and then we're going to break down this upcoming week's opponent, the Clarion Golden Eagles, and joined, as always, with Coach Dunn. And Coach, before we get started, this is a perfect weekend of football. The weather was great Saturday. California won. The Steelers won, and the Brownsville Falcons won. There you go. So before you answer, the Brownsville. Before you answer, uh, California. Which of the three games you're most excited about? Now keep in mind, Brownsville's lost 24 straight games. Yeah, still excited about the Falcons, <laughs> right? <laughs> no, congratulations to them. I know those kids are over there working hard, and to get a win is is good for them. But excited to go on the road and get a victory. Anytime in this league, you can go on the road and play good football and get a win. You know, you feel good about it. I thought. You know, our team took another step in the right direction. We're not there yet. We've got a lot of things that we've got to fix, but our guys are battling. They're playing hard, and I thought we took a, a big step this week. Yeah, and it was one of those games, you know, we talked about it last week. The, the, it's almost like the second opening day with that first conference or divisional game and on the road, for your first road game this week. And like I said, it just, the, the air felt a little different than the first two weeks. I mean, first two weeks are home, PSAC teams, but this is, you know, everything is still ahead of you when you start doing West games. And I thought, um, it was a workmanlike game. I tell all my friends every game in the in the West is basically pack a lunch, and that's basically what it was Saturday for about two and a half hours. Yeah, I thought the guys did a good job. They handled the travel well, and as, as a head coach, you never know. You know, we're we're playing a lot of young guys right now, a lot of new faces, a lot of guys that made a trip on Saturday that have never been on a college, you know, a college away game. So I thought they handled it well. I thought. You know, we changed our schedule up a little bit, and I thought it went really well. But just proud of the guys. They were locked in. You know, we didn't play well offensively in the first half, and I'm sure we'll talk about that. And, you know, and, and we've got to learn that we've got to put 60 minutes together um, to, to beat really, really good football teams. We're going to have to play all 60 minutes, and, and I'm not sure that we've done that offensively yet, and that's something we're going to work on this week coming out to a faster start. But, you know, our guys battled. They kept battling, kept battling. We kind of knew, you know, where we were at halftime, I, I said, guys, no fiery speeches. I said, you know, we're not executing and we're hurting ourselves. And we've done that a lot. So we came out in the second half. And I think we scored on four straight mm -hmm. possessions. So, you know, was proud of the way they, they battled and kept in there. But we've got to start faster. Well, I was going to say, I was going to ask you what you told the, uh, the team in the locker room. But if it's nothing, you know. Yeah, I, I, I literally said that no fiery speeches. You know, we're, we're just not executing offensively. I, you know, defense did a nice job of, of holding us in there. And, and, you know, we had a big turnover right before the half, which was huge. You know, they score there. They go into the half with the lead. But still felt like we were controlling the game on both sides of the ball. Felt like our offensive line was controlling the game offensively. Felt like our defense and our front front seven were controlling the line. So at no point was I like, oh, you know, here we go. But we just need to execute better. And I think our guys are so amped up and so – want to make so many plays, they just got to relax and let the plays come to them. And, and that's something we're going to talk about this, you know, today in our team meeting. Well, one of the big plays that came to your team was at the end of that first half, uh, it, it was 7-3. Edinburgh was driving. Uh, I believe there was probably less than three minutes, maybe about two minutes left in the, uh, the first half. Uh, first and goal, and your team made a huge uh, fumble recovery, forced fumble, get the ball out. And you could almost feel almost like a blue in the air being let out of that stadium. Because that was a great home crowd for Edinburgh, but whenever – your team was celebrating getting the fumble. I think that changed the, the entire complex complexion of that Saturday's game. I, absolutely, and I, I think that was a huge play for us, and, and it was something we talked about in practice. We do a, a, a couple good on good periods, uh, first offense versus first defense every week. On Tuesdays, we usually do a two-minute drill. On Wednesdays, we do a red zone period. On Tuesday, you know, the offense moved the ball down the field and got into the red zone on the defense. Um, and we called a timeout, and I went over and talked to the defense. I said, listen, just because they move the ball doesn't mean they have to score. You, we need to bow up inside the 20. You know, we need to play every play, and, and that's what we did. You know, they got the, a big catch on, on maybe a, a controversial call there um, that, that I thought anyway. And, and when I watched it on film, still think it was a controversial call. But, okay, one, first and goal to one, let's make a play. And Jacob Siegel came in there, knocked the ball loose, Dom Solomon recovered it, and that was a huge play in that game. It kind of gave us a little momentum going into halftime. Yeah, hey, you guys go into halftime uh, preserving that lead, and then you come out, like you said, in the second half and score on four straight possessions and, and did it a variety of different ways, long drives. Um, it wasn't the week before there were a ton of splash plays. This was a hard-nosed uh, football game, but I was really impressed with the way your team ran the ball in the second half. Just not, not a lot of 50-yard runs, but a lot of five, six, seven-yard runs that will move the clock and move the chains. Yeah, I feel like we got good balance right now offensively. I think, we're, I think Chad Salisbury, our offensive coordinator, is doing a really good job of mixing in the run in the pass. 
Uh, I think our guys are buying into the scheme. Uh, we've, we've got talented receivers that we challenged this week. They've got to become better blockers, and, and I thought they did that. I thought they gave better effort blocking this week to help the run game, and then, you know, as you see each week, there's a different guy stepping up. You know, two weeks ago it was Eric Willis had a big day. This week Amari Hawkins had a big day. I think he had a, a touchdown and 120-some yards receiving. Uh, we've got other receivers that are going to step up. Uh, Demonte Martin's doing a lot of good things. Noah Hamlin's doing some good things. Um, you know, we had a guy, uh, Diave Johnson, that was injured this week, and, and we held out. So I think you're going to see more receivers start to step up as, as we continue to, to continue to go. Well, that's, you, you took the words out of my mouth because, like I said, uh, you're like you said, a lot of receivers, and it's just nice to see a lot of weapons out there because, you know, it seems like each week someone else has stepped up in that receiving core. Yeah, and, and happy with those guys. And then we're, we're playing three tailbacks. We're playing four tailbacks, actually. And, you know, none of those guys are selfish. And, you know, as a tailback, you want to get 25 to 30 carries a game. And I think Bobby Boyd had the most carries for us at 10 or 11. I think Eric McCann had, had 9 or 10. Um, so we're playing a number of guys that, that all have a skill set that allows us to, to, to lean on them. And um, really happy with those. And I thought the O-line played well. They kept Davis, our quarterback, clean for most of the day. I think we... We had one sack, and it was kind of late in the game when we kicked the field goal. It was more of a covered sack. Um, so those guys kept him clean. I was, I was really pleased with the offense performance, other than a few mistakes in the first half that, that cost us drives. You know, we turned the ball over in, in the red zone one time on a, on a tip ball. Uh, we had another ball that was wide open for a touchdown that we dropped. Those are the plays that we got to make in that first half. And then we're not talking about, you know, going into halftime in a game. We're talking about, okay, we're going into halftime 14 or 21 up, and let's go finish this thing. And before we talk about the defensive effort, we'll have some offensive noise right here. Davis Black, workman-like performance, 14-25, 219, and a touchdown. You mentioned your running game. Uh, six players rushed 38 times for 128 yards. So talk about just, you know, that is just a lot of flexibility. Uh, in the air, Mar Hopkins, six, receive, six receptions, 121 yards, and a touchdown. So like I said, there's a lot of names on there. Um, in the air, 252 yards receiving and two touchdowns because um, there was a touchdown uh, in, the first, or in the second half. But moving over to defense, turnover in the first half and then the second half, Matt Toby with the pick that pretty much felt like, to a fan, I know coaching staff, the game's never over until there's three zeros on the clock, but to the, to the fans watching the game, I think that kind of sealed the deal. Yeah, I think creating turnovers, it, it, we, it, we, it's our main thing. And we work on it every day. We start practice with tackling and turnovers every day. And finally, we created some turnovers. And finally, we created some field position for the offense. It was good. I thought we tackled better defensively. I thought our front really controlled the game. Um, but to get those turnovers was big. We got a couple sacks. Izzy Watson came back and got a sack in the in excuse me, in the, in the first quarter there. Uh, I thought our pass rush was getting home, so you, you could tell they, they started trying to get the ball out of his hands, out of their quarterback's hands quicker. But I thought our defense played well, but I thought the difference was the, the turnovers that they created. And we'll take a look at the highlights from this past week's uh, matchup with California Vulcans getting a win on the road at Edinburgh. You're watching the Gary Dunn Show right here on CUTV. Snap kick is up, and the kick from Reed is good. First points of the game, 8.29 left to go here in the first quarter. Edinburgh lead 3-0. Play action pass, quick throw. That pass going to be tipped and intercepted. Black gets the snap, throwing, firing, catching, and scoring. It's Eric Willis the third. From Edinburgh and it looks like it's not going to work out stopped right at the door the, the ball's out, ball's out there. Oh, the handoff to McCann and McCann gets into the end zone for the touchdown and after all that the Vulcans finally break the seal and off to McCann again and McCann untouched into the end zone for the Vulcan touchdown second of the day for him Bernard gets the snap, looking, it throws it straight to Toby, who picks it off. Toby can go the other way, going to get flipped overhead out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Play action pass, throw towards the back of the end zone, caught for the touchdown. Amari Hopkins pulls in the score, and the Vulcans able to push this lead even further. Snap, kick, beat goes up. Biko's kick is good.
Join us for the 6th Annual Vulcans Athletics Day of Giving, kicking off at 8 a.m. on Tuesday, September 26th, to support Vulcan Athletics. For 36 hours, alumni, family, and friends will have the opportunity to make a gift in support of their favorite Vulcan sports teams. All gifts support student-athlete scholarships. This year, the goal is to raise $40,000. Make a gift and invite others to join you. You make a difference. Go to www.tinyurl.com slash Vulcans Make a Difference to make your gift. A new season of Vulcan football is set to begin September 9th versus Kutztown. September 16th versus Shepherd. September 23rd at Edinburgh. September 30 versus Clarion. October 7th at IUP. Homecoming October 14th versus Seton Hill. October 21st at Slippery Rock. October 28th versus Mercyhurst. November 4th at Gannon. November 11th at East Stroudsburg. All games available on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Digital Network. Suffering from World Cup withdrawal? Well, Vulcan men's and women's soccer has you covered. Come up and watch the region's best soccer teams do battle in a combined 18 home games at the beautiful Phillipsburg Soccer Complex. In addition, three men's and three women's home games will be featured live on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Digital Network. Follow Cal Vulcans for up-to-date information on all things Vulcan soccer. Vulcan Volleyball is back and you can have the best seat in the house. The Convocation Center will be rocking with 11 home games featuring some of the best teams in the region and the PSAC. All home games will be streamed live on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Digital Network. Follow Cal Vulcans on all social media platforms for up-to-date schedules and information. Vulcan Volleyball and you, a winning combination. Mitchell rolling to his right, trying to find the receiver in the end zone. Touchdown, Vulcans. Jaquay Jackson on the reception. Well done, Wolf to his left, look, looking for. He's going to get picked off by Dillo. Dillo, where he's been down the field. It's going to be like last week. Dillo going to be brought down just shy. It's going to ha fake the handoff, pitch it over to Jackson. Jackson strides on in, untouched in the end zone for the touchdown. And the Vulcans able to block it. Number 31 for the Vulcans able to block it. With the fast huddle, is going to hand it off to McCann. McCann untouched into the end zone for the Vulcan touchdown. And the shotgun. Fire toward the end zone. Touchdown. Who else but Jaquay Jackson once again for the Vulcans. Three touchdowns. Snap. Beaker's kick is up. And Beaker's kick is good. Mitchell gets the snap, looking to fire deep down the field, has Jaquay Jackson wide open. Jackson catches it at the 25, and Jaquay Jackson is gone for the Vulcan touchdown. It's Esposito's punt gets blocked once again, and here comes Gabe Miller. Miller is going to go untouched into the end zone, touchdown Vulcans. Hurt. Gets the high snap, able to bring it down, hands it off to Williams. Williams able to break this one out to the outside. Gets a block by Harper. Williams going to go untouched into the end zone. Touchdown, Vulcans. Welcome back to the Gary Dunn Show. Uh, we just talked about the win at Edinburgh this past week. And now, uh, Coach, before we break down, this upcoming week's opponent, Clarion. This is the part of the show you love with graphics and breaking oh, down everything no. else. So we're going to take a look, just uh, put a bow on this past week's action in the PSAC. Once again, first week of divisional play. As we saw, uh, we beat Edinburgh 31-10. to uh, Also in the West, Gannon over Clarion, overcoming a 20-point uh, deficit early on in that game to win 27-20. Uh, IEP goes to Mercyhurst and wins 30-13. to And then Slippery Rock in the nightcap 35-14. to And then... Over in the east, Millersville beating Westchester 23-14. to uh, Kutztown going to Shepherd and winning 20-3. to uh, East Stroudsburg in a back-and-forth affair over Lockhaven 35-21. to And then Bloomsburg going to Shippensburg and losing 7 to nothing. We'll take a look real quickly 
at the PSAC standings. And coach, really, there's a bunch of teams 1-0, a bunch of teams 0-0. Oh, no. So we, we can just go through there. But uh, real quick about the end of the uh, finishing up, for sure, of the weekend. We got lucky with weather. I was watching some of the games when I got home, and it seemed like everything uh, southeast of where we were in Edinburgh and Erie just got hammered by rain. It's crazy that Erie had better weather than everybody else, right? <laughs> no, yeah, we got on the bus and, and started home. It started pouring. I said, where did this come from? No, a beautiful day, a little bit of wind up in Edinburgh, but, but beautiful day for college football. And like I said, just proud of the way the guys traveled, business, business approach, uh, you know, did a great job in the hotel, did a great job of practice here before we left. Uh, really good job. And, and you know, that's that's a thing that you, you, you've got to be good on the road in this league. You've got to take care of business on the road, and, and we were able to do that. Unfortunately, this week uh, we get to be home again. Uh, this weekend's Claren, a team that, uh, due to several anomalies, have, has not been at Adamson Stadium since 2019. Uh, and as always, we'll break it down a little bit. Uh, what have you seen on film so far? And we'll start for, with our first with their offense. Yeah, their offense a little bit different. You know, Edinburgh is very similar offensively to what we do. A lot of formations, some motions, try and create some matchups. Clarion is a little bit different offensively than anybody in the league. Uh, they really base everything off what we call jet or fly motion. Uh, they, they hand the ball to a bunch of different guys, whether it be wide receivers. They've got a big, strong tailback. They've got some elusive wide receivers that they'll run the jet sweeps to. And then they run their quarterback a bunch. So they really put pressure on a defense by spreading you out and you've got to play assignment football. You know, they'll run some option off of their jet sweep stuff, the, the, some quarterback read stuff. So really stretch a defense horizontally, and then they'll throw the ball vertically. So a, a little bit different offense. Uh, they're doing a good job running the ball. They're, they're, a, they're a heavy run team. Uh, I think they're rushing for 150 or some yards a game, and, and, and it's a host of guys that are doing it. So um, we'll have to play assignment football on defense. We'll have to tackle a lot better than we have early in the year. You know, they, their whole offense is based on getting you out in space and, and, and creating those one-on-one -on -one matchups. So we've got to do a great job of playing disciplined, sound football, and also tackling when, when, when we get to the, the ball carrier. Well, on the preparation end, as you mentioned the team, uh, Claren plays an entirely different style of offense. What is that like during the week leading up for, to prepare a defense? If it's something that you normally don't see more than once a year. Yeah, really rely on our scout teams. And our young guys are doing a great job. You know, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about those guys. We had some guys that really stepped up last week that, you know, for us defensively, we're always going to, you know, pick out their top two or three weapons and put, put our kids in those jerseys. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought we'd been doing a really good job of that. Um, our scout teams are doing a really good job of preparing us. So it's going to be on them to be able to, to, to run their offense at full speed so that our defense can see it, you know, uh, tonight, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, and then again on Friday. So, you know, hats off to our scout team guys. They're, they're doing a really good job, and we need a big week from them this week. And on the other side of the ball, what have you seen on film from their defense? Yeah, they're a base four down defense. They'll, they'll play a, a two high shell most of the time. They'll roll to, 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 to one high, and they'll play some cover one. Uh, active up front, I think that's what jumps off the screen at you. They got some nice uh, cover guys on the backside, but I think their D line is probably their strength right now. Uh, they've got some guys that, that create tackles for losses and, and, and get in the backfield and, and, and disrupt things. Not a heavy blitz team. Uh, haven't shown a lot of blitz. They'll bring some nickel fire. They'll bring, you know, some some inside stuff. Um, but just sound. They're going to keep everything in front of them, and, and they tackle well, and, and they're not going to give up the big play to you. And the final uh, phase of the game, special teams, we've seen so often a big special teams play here and there is the difference. What, uh, what does the third uh, unit look like for Yeah, Karen? I'm really impressed with them special teams. They are doing a really good job. they got a kickoff guy that's kicking it, kicking it deep. Uh, their field goal kicker is a good kicker. Their punter solid, but really impressed with their cover units. Uh, we've got to get better at kickoff return. We are starting... Um, you know, at the 25-yard line, we've got to, and we're going to challenge our guys today, we've got to get better at that. I thought we made some strides last week on our kickoff team, but we got to continue to develop there. Uh, but their cover units are really good. I think they cover punts really well. I think they cover kickoffs exceptionally well. And then they've got some dangerous returners. So, you know, we're going to have to, special teams is going to be a big part of this game, and we're really going to challenge our guys this week that we need to continue to grow in that area. And, Coach, before uh, we finish up, I'm going to read – the rest of the schedule. So that's going to give you some time uh, to, to figure out what you're going to say to get the students here two weeks that's ago. Right. You, you had a great speech. We yep. had a packed house. So I'll give you some time to, to think about what you're saying. We're looking at the PSAC schedule this week uh, for week two of divisional play. Uh, Clarion will be at California at 12 noon at Adamson Stadium. Uh, other games in the West, Mercer's at Edinburgh at 2, Gannon at Seton Hill at 4, and then IUP at Slippery Rock at 6 p.m. And over in the East, East, Sprout, East 
East Stroudsburg at Kutztown at noon, Lock Haven at Millersville at noon, Shippensburg making the short trip to Shepherd at noon, and then the final East game will be Bloomsburg at Westchester at 2 o'clock. And as I just mentioned, Coach, we're at home this noon, this Saturday at noon, Here's your spiel. Yeah, so no, it's going to be great weather. I already checked it, checked it this morning, great weather. Uh, students have done a great job, but here's what I need the students to do, is if you came last week, bring two friends with you, right? Call home, get somebody from a different college to come to California for the weekend. We need your support. Our guys are playing good football right now. Uh, let's have a great day at Adamson Stadium. The tailgating will be going on. I know the marching band will be there. The student section, as soon as you walk into the stands, is the this, Section closest to the concession stand. Uh, come on and have a great time at Addison Stadium and enjoy college football. So once again, that's, if you were here last week, bring two friends. Go to the student two section. Friends. We'll say tailgating a lot opens up probably like 7 a.m., 8 a.m. So get there early. Get the hot dogs. Get the hamburgers on there. Give Coach and I one on the way in. That would be nice uh, would to be help great. wake us up. Um, but it, it's going to be a great day. If you can make it, if you're out of, out of the country, let's say. You if, you're without, if you're with <laughs> seven hours away. Uh, CUTV uh, has you covered on CUTV Sports 1. The game will be live, but also be live on the PSAC Digital Network and also live on 91.9 FM Power 92. So, Coach, any final words before uh, we put a bow on this? No, I appreciate you guys and, and, you know, excited for this week. Excited to be home, and, and it should be a great day at Adamson Stadium. Once again, that's noon Saturday. Clarion at California, 12 noon. Come early, come hungry, bring friends. For Coach Dunn, I'm Gary Smith. We'll see you next week on The Gary Dunn Show.